Everybody thinks that climate change is about melting glaciers and polar bears. I think it's a big mistake. This is 100% of people's story. I felt the water rising. And we went under. I knew I lost her immediately. I don't think scary is the right word. Dangerous, definitely. We are putting together the ultimate cast. They're going to be the correspondents. There is no more fire season. We have wildfires all year round. This is unbelievable. We used to have seasons back then. Right. And now we don't. This is a lake? Wow. Could Yemen run out of water? Yes, possibly. This abstract idea that the oceans are rising is the next generation's problem. Climate disruption is not a political issue. It's a moral issue. A thermometer is not Republican. It's not Democrat. If I've seen it in the last 10 years of my life, what am I going to see in the next 50 years? There's going to be more storms, and they're going to be worse. What have you done? Do you think it makes sense to build or just give up? I really don't think the people are going to give up. You don't want to be on the side that said, I had a chance and I didn't do anything. You've got to bring an understanding. There's an urgent need to change things, or it's all going to be gone. People need to help make it right. Let's go get it done! Forward, together! If we think that there's something can be done, then let's do it. This is about survival. This is the biggest story of our time. Good evening. Uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to the World Bank Group. Welcome to our spring meetings. And welcome to this uh, very uh, exciting evening for us, this screening, uh, special screening of the years of living dangerously, uh, a very important, I think, timely uh, new uh, piece of, of television uh, documentary. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for coming. We would like to thank and congratulate in particular the executive producers, James Cameron, Jerry Weintraub and Arnold Schwarzenegger. We're really pleased to have with us here tonight the executive producer, Dan Abbasi, and co-producer, Jeff Horowitz, old friends. Welcome and thank you for the groundbreaking and creative vision that you've brought to the screen. We're also really pleased um, to bring two of those who uh, participated in the series live to you tonight, uh, Tom Friedman of the New York Times and uh, the Pulitzer Prize winning author, and Dr. M. Sanjan, who is now uh, the Executive Vice President of Conservation International. They're here tonight and will discuss their work with us in a few moments. I'd like now to ask them, uh, both uh, Tom and Sanjan, if you could join me on the stage. And I'm going to hand over the podium to the President of the World Bank Group, Jim Kim, who's going to tell us why climate action is so important for the mission and goals of the World Bank Group. Jim, please. Thank you. Uh, Thank, thanks very much, Rachel. Um, a warm welcome to everybody uh, here tonight and to our panelists, especially uh, Mr. Sanjayan and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Tom Friedman, my friend, who I find myself quoting more and more all the time. Thank you for being here. Uh, this is the Washington premiere of Years of Living Dangerously. And of course, uh, you wouldn't be here in this room if you didn't all understand and um, embrace this notion that climate change threatens us all. You know, I have the great good fortune of uh, being in meetings um, with uh, ministers of uh, finance and, and, and even heads of state in some of the poor countries that are being impacted very heavily by climate change. And what they keep saying is, why is it that we have to bear the brunt of a problem that we had very little role in creating? Now, this is a very difficult conversation. But what we know is, is that uh, um, one year ago when we uh, uh, set the, the twin targets for the World Bank Group, ending poverty by 2030 and boosting shared prosperity, uh, we knew that if we didn't tackle the issue of climate change, we would never meet our goals. You know, the IFCC um, has uh, published a new report. And among those, uh, uh, the issues uh, that we've been talking about now for some time are the enormous impact that uh, climate change is going to have on availability of both food and water. You know, um, uh, we still don't have a global plan 
that is equal to the challenge. Uh, we at the World Bank Group have been working very hard uh, to put some of the pieces of that, um, uh, of that plan together. We've been working very closely with uh, leaders in, um, um, in the battle against climate change, but still, uh, we, we, we don't have a plan equal to the challenge, and that is threatening in a fundamental way uh, our um, credibility whenever something happens that wakes people up to the reality of climate change. Um, I was uh, just speaking with the United Nations Secretary General who's here with us and will be doing an event with us tomorrow. Uh, he has a very important summit coming up um, uh, in, uh, in, in September. Uh, and that will, of course, lead in then to COP20 in Lima. And then we have COP21 uh, in, uh, uh, in Paris. And we really um, need to uh, 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 dramatically increase our aspirations for what we might be able to accomplish. Now, um, I hope that uh, uh, the years of living dangerously, the stories here, will be a wake-up call. Uh, this was uh, James Cameron's idea. And uh, last year, uh, he uh, had this great honor. And uh, it's, uh, it's something that uh, I could never imagine, but he actually had a new species a frog named after him called uh, Pristamantis James Cameroni. Um, put, put that on your bucket list, uh, having a frog named after you. Now, uh, James uh, is even more focused on protecting his namesake's habitat from climate change. And uh, he wanted to be with us here tonight, but he couldn't be, but he uh, sent us this message. Hi, I'm Jim Cameron, one of the executive producers of Years of Living Dangerously. I wish I could be with you tonight, but even in this manner, it's an honor to address this prestigious audience and to be part of the World Bank and IMF's spring meeting. I want to commend the leadership, courage, and hard work of World Bank President Dr. Jim Kim and his strong statement that we will never end poverty if we do not tackle climate change. Years of Living Dangerously is 100% a people story. The message of the series is that climate change is very real and that it's happening right now, that it's affecting all people everywhere. I'd like to extend a special thank you to the dedicated team for Connect for Climate for making this event possible and for putting climate change at the forefront of the agenda this week. I'd also like to acknowledge those of you who participated in today's meeting of the Calderon Commission on Climate and who are participating in tomorrow's climate ministerial meeting. This challenge cannot be overcome without you. My hope is that this screening and the entire Years of Living Dangerously series may serve as a tool in your important work. As the series title suggests, these are the years of living dangerously. The world is in danger. We are accountable and we need to take action. Thank you, Dr. Kim, once again, and to all assembled. Uh, tonight, you're going to hear from um, some uh, key global thought leaders on, on, uh, um, on the film, including uh, Tom Friedman. And uh, uh, we're very lucky to have this, this uh, a series that explores climate change issues from drought to deforestation, excessive heat, ice melt, uh, flooding, extreme weather and energy uses, and, and, and all of it is very much uh, science-based. You know, the theme of this meeting, um, for me, uh, has been built around two things uh, that, um, that Tom Friedman talks about all the time. Uh, the first is the reality that there is now in the world a virtual middle class. Um, I witnessed this very directly um, when I was uh, at 14,000 feet up in the mountains playing soccer with uh, President Evo Morales in Bolivia. Uh, people all had smartphones and were connected to everyone else. Uh, in uh, uh, Uttar Pradesh in India, the poorest state in India, I saw um, uh, very poor women literally watching Korean soap operas on their uh, smartphones. Everybody wants to be part of the global middle class. And so in order to meet that demand and, and to go after that particular aspiration, which I can certainly understand because I was born in 1959 in Korea in a country that at that time was poorer than Ghana. Very few people um, uh, in Korea in 1959 even understood what it meant to aspire to be part of the global middle class. Now everybody wants it and we have to step up. 
But in order to step up, we have to provide energy. And in order to step up, we have to provide so many different things that could potentially put more carbon into the air. So we have to now balance both of these parties. On the one hand, the reality that there's a global middle class, and the other, that um, the, 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 the planet is hot, flat, and crowded, as, uh, as uh, uh, Tom has said. And so this is an almost uh, um, uh, uh, unthinkable task. How do you do that? How do you provide energy for poor people aspiring to join the global middle class while at the same time battling climate change? Well, this is precisely what we've taken on here at the World Bank Group, and we just couldn't possibly be more serious about it. Um, Rachel uh, is, uh, is our leader in, uh, in, in this regard, and we're looking at everything we do to see if we can potentially make more progress. You know, um, uh, in a recent um, uh, conversation with President Obama, uh, he told me that this is one of the issues he cares most about, climate change. And it's specifically uh, because of the legacy that he's going to leave to his daughters and to all of our children. Um, I've said this many times before, but um, I visualize in my own mind um, what my children will tell me in 15 uh, to 20 years. And uh, based on the way they already speak to me, uh, I suspect they'll say something like, Dad, what the hell were you thinking? You were president of the World Bank, you were doing eight billion a year in energy, and you left us this? Now, you know, it's just 16 years that we're talking about uh, when we get to our, our uh, deadline for ending extreme poverty, but by then we could already be at two degrees Celsius. And if we are, 40% of the arable land in Africa will be gone. Uh, Bangkok could be underwater. And so uh, this is very real. Uh, we are uh, working very hard to deal with this complexity and still uh, make very, very positive contributions. We still need a global plan. We need to get excited about and energized so that we have a great summit meeting uh, in, at the United Nations in September. And that leads to unprecedented global agreements in Paris uh, in, uh, in 2015. But it's an uphill battle. And we need every single one of you here in this room uh, to push us, to force us, people like me, and then engage in some way so that we can find a, a path forward to tackle uh, this extremely frightening problem. Uh, thank you for being here. I thank our panelists. Uh, and uh, please enjoy the film. I apologize. I have to go uh, to uh, another meeting right now, just one of 53 for me in these uh, uh, five days. Um, and uh, again, I thank you for your attention.